Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our F14B Tomcat and I have the pleasure of looking at the AIM 54 Phoenix. Now we've been waiting for the Phoenix to be introduced into DCS for some years now and the time has finally come so it's all very exciting. So first of all some history from the flight manual. The AIM-54 Phoenix is a long-range air-to-air missile which was originally designed to be used in the F-111B Fleet Air Defence Fighter which never materialised. When the F-111B project was scrapped, the AIM-54 and the corresponding AN Org 9 WCS eventually found its way into the F-14 instead. The F-14 is capable of carrying up to six AIM-54 missiles, four on rails and the fuselage and one on each of the glove pylons. Because of the missile cooling system used, the two front Phoenix pylons must always be mounted, meaning that the rear fuselage pylons can't be used if the front ones aren't used. The glove pylons contain their own cooling systems. The missile is capable of engagement against a single target in STT, single target track, and multiple targets while using the track wild search or track wild scan TWS. The AIM-54 is available in two different versions, the AIM-54A and the AIM-54C. On top of that, the AIM-54A, we have both the Mark 47 and the Mark 60 rocket motors available. The Mark 60 has considerable longer range. The AIM-54C, which is the more modern variant, differs from having a digital seeker instead of the analog one in the 54A increasing its overall performance as well as an improved smokeless Mark 47 rocket motor. The AIM-54 has a range of at least 60 nautical miles against a fighter-sized target at high altitudes in Pulse Doppler STT. That said, we've seen shots of nearly 100 miles. When using TWS for engagement against multiple targets, this drops to around 50 nautical miles. The larger the target we're firing against, the longer range we have. If launching in active mode, which we'll look at in a bit, then the range drops to about 10 miles for a fighter-sized target. So let's equip our Phoenixes armament screen. So we're going to put them on six pylons. I'm going to use the Mark 60 because it's got the best range and it looks the best. Okay. Request rearming. Next, we're going to look at the controls we're going to be using today, and there aren't going to be a lot. We're going to be using the trigger, press and hold for three seconds to fire the missile. If we have to gain, if we have to gain an STT lock from the pilot's position, I'll probably use the PAL target designate forward button. And we'll also want to select the weapon. So we've got weapon selector Sparrow or Phoenix missiles here, and that should do us. We can't just fire the missiles straight off, just like the AIM-7, they have to be warmed up. So, we've got to do, press the missile prep button here, this takes all of about two minutes. What this is actually doing is enabling power and cooling to the missile and running the BITs. As well as that, like the AIM-7, it's having to tune the missile receiver to the Org-9 radar signature in the aircraft. Once the two minutes have elapsed and the missiles are ready, we have corresponding pylon indicators here on the ACM panel. Now, as well as the missiles warming up and firing up, they have to be cooled down. This is very important. Some people forget this. So into the Rio seat here, we've got a switch on the outside here. Now, if we've got Phoenixes, this switch must be set forward to turn Phoenix cooling off. If we didn't have Phoenixes aboard, it would be in the down position. So ensure that that is switched up. Now, as you probably expected, this missile is quite complex and there are various ways that we can use it. Generally speaking, we would categorize it as a FOX-3 missile because it has its own radar seeker head aboard. There are two ways that the missile can seek. First of all, SARH, semi-active radar homing. In this mode, it does not use its own onboard radar. Instead, it accepts guidance information from the Org-9 in the Tomcat that fired it until a certain point in its path, which will be determined by the mode that we use it in. The second method of tracking is ARH, Active radio, Radar Homing. This is where it uses its own onboard radar to track the target for guidance. When a FOX-3 type missile switches to ARH method, this is generally referred to it as it going pitbull. And at this point, it's no longer under control from the mothership. So there are what I would consider five different modes of using this missile, and we go through them one at a time. First is the Pulse Doppler STD SARH method. So let's break that name apart. PD just means Pulse Doppler, STT single target track, and SARH we've already talked about. So in this method, it will stay in SARH from when it leaves our ship all the way until it impacts on target, which means that it's going to be receiving guidance from our radar all the time, and it will never go fully active or ARH or Pitbull. The benefits of this is that, first of all, this is the maximum range mode. 
It will always be a longer range that we can use it in this mode than TWS or any of the other modes. Secondly, it means that the missile never goes pitbull, so we always have control of this missile in this mode. Therefore, we can be assured, as long as we can keep the SCT lock on the hostile, that it is going to hit that hostile. The next mode we'll look at is the TWS SARH ARH mode. So this just means firing the missile in while we have a track while scan lock instead of an STT lock. And at different points along its flight, it uses either seeking method, SARH or ARH. Generally speaking, we fire the missile and it starts off being guided like the STT SARH mode with guidance from the mothership. Then at a predetermined point along its path, a command is sent from our mothership to the missile to tell the missile to go fully active in ARH mode to go pitbull. And then it guides itself the rest of the journey until it hits the target. The beauty of the track while scan mode is that unlike the STT mode, we can track multiple targets and fire at multiple targets simultaneously, up to six targets simultaneously. Now in some cases with certain parameters, the command from the mothership to the missile to tell it to go active ARH will not happen. In this case, the missile will continue to rely on guidance from the mothership until impact. Because of that, in this mode, we can never truly call the AIM-54 a fire and forget missile per se, but it can be considered fire and forget or autonomous after the missile transfers to ARH Pitbull. Now, the third mode is active radar homing. It's where we force the missile to become fully active ARH as soon as it's launched. And if we go back to the rear cockpit, we can see we've got down here the default is normal mode for, for the Phoenix, which is as we've been describing it. What we can do is right click on that and turn it to Phoenix active. This forces it into ARH, active radar homing, as soon as it's fired from the aircraft. So it goes pitbull as soon as it's left our aircraft. However, note that if it goes pitbull and it can't find a target in its scan zone, then it will automatically reconnect with the mothership and revert back to SARH mode until it is recommanded back into ARH. I haven't yet found a reason to use this, but I'm sure someone knows a very good reason why you would use this mode. The fourth mode is ACM active mode. So this will only be used within close range. And in this mode, the missile is commanded to go ARH pitbull before it even leaves the rail. So as soon as it leaves the rail, it's already fully active. And this is the only mode that we can consider it a fully fire and forget weapon. To command the missile into ACM active mode, we can change our missile mode here from normal into bore sight. And or we can have the ACM cover up or we could have a radar track on the target that is not a pulse Doppler track. If launching in ACM mode without a radar track, then it will simply fire at our ADL, which is the cross here, and search for the first target, the strongest signal it sees, and then track that. And if we have a track that is non-pulse Doppler, then it will pre-position itself to fire towards that, and again, be fully active as soon as it leaves the rail. The fifth mode, if we can consider it a mode, would be ECM mode. This is where we're firing at a target that is jamming us. So if we're firing from a target a long way away that's jamming us, we don't have all the information we need to actually fire a missile at the target. So what we can do is just fire it, and we don't do anything different in the cockpit. We just fire it again. It'll automatically switch to ECM mode. This is where it can use a method of angle tracking to fly towards the target. And when it gets close enough to the target, using either SARH or ARH, then it will be able to track the target normally and continue along a normal flight. So as for general comments about these different modes, like I said, ECM mode will get done automatically. You won't have to do anything with that. ACM active is obviously if we're gonna be in a dogfight of some kind or, or you know close quarters. And especially if we can't get a pulse Doppler lock, a pulse Doppler SCT is going to be used if we just want to track and fire out one single target. And the good thing about this is we have maximum ability. We have maximum range and we have maximum ability to track. And also there's no chance of friendly fire with this SCT mode because we will guide the radar all the way to the target with our aircraft. The drawback of the STT mode is that we have to keep facing at the target all the way until impact. We can't turn around and run because the, because the missile never goes fully active. And the track while scan, the great thing about what the track while scan is that A, we can launch a multiple targets. B, we're never gonna get target fixation because we never concentrate on just one target. The uh, radar continues to, continues to scan all targets and see that at some point along its path, the missile will be commanded to go active, at which point we no longer have to guide it and we can turn away at that point. And D, the fourth thing and the best thing about the track while scan, I think, is that when using a track while scan method, it does not give the target at the indication that it's been fired at until the missile goes active ARH. 
An STT fire mode will let the target know that we're firing them from as soon as we fire the missile. The track while scan method will only let the target know he's being locked onto and actually fired at when the missile goes active, by which point there's a good chance that he's in lethal range and he won't be able to dodge the missile. So next we'll get in the air and we'll try the different modes out on aircraft. Okay, we're in the cockpit now, so let's get everything prepared. Master arm on, check that we're in air-to-air -air mode. Make sure VID is set to TID. We can see from our pylon indicators on the ACM panel, all uh, missiles are warmed up and ready to fire. Next, we're gonna select our weapon. So that's the Sparrows, that's the Phoenix. You can say it says PH and there are six of them. The first mode we'll show is the basic STT mode. Now we could get the STT lock on three ways. We could do it from the pilot's position using a PAL or whatever we wanted to use. Or we can get a lock from the rear's position. We can command Jester to drive him or we can do him manually and doing him manually is always best. So let's go back and have a look. Or oh, before we go, quickly say that the missile that is selected to fire is this guy here, the one that's checkered, and we cannot choose which station to fire. That will be chosen by the WCA. Okay, let's have a look around. So we are scanning in this direction and you can see the whole bucket load of targets that we can attack. So we don't wanna make this a radio video by any means, but just to say that we can launch the missile from back here by pressing the launch button there. And we've already looked at that button there for Phoenix active mode. So we're gonna unpause. We're gonna uh, hook this guy here. It's just above our aircraft carrier by the looks of it. Is a bit naughty. Got him there. He is at 19 miles, which is good. We're going to go for the STT pulse Doppler mode. And we're going to jump back to the front. And what we can see here is our radar-based symbology. So we know we're in an STT lock because we've got the designated diamond here showing directly around the target. The target is right in the middle. I'm not sure if you can see that. We've got a dynamic range bar here. It changes depending on our actual distance. So it's the 20 mile version at the moment. 20 miles is there. Zero miles is there. We're currently where the chevron is, which is what, about 17 and a half miles. It also has Armin and Armax markers. Armin is this one down here. Armax is that one up there. They represent the maximum ballistic range of the missile and the minimum range of the missile. As long as our chevron here is between our max and our min, then we're good to fire. We also have our closure rate shown here. We've got zero knots here, 1,000 knots there. And if we were opening between us, minus 200 knots there. You can see we are, what, 700 knots closure. And we've got our steering cue. Our steering cue is this little upside down T here. So this allows us to compensate for any lead that the target needs. So if the target was facing, uh, moving highly right to left, then this steering cue would be far out to the left to ensure that we aim in front of the target. To use the steering cue, we manoeuvre so that it central position there is on our dot there and then we are we can be assured that we've got the best most optimal shooting cue uh, shooting solution sorry also this is represent, represented on the vid probably a bit better we've got the t upside down t uh, it's a bit hard to see in its current configuration but it's something like that there okay and we want to get the center of that t in the middle of our ase circle uh, which is this one here for the phoenix it's a lot smaller than the AIM-7 circle, so we'd maneuver. So this T here would be centered in the ASE circle before we fired the missile for optimum shot. Okay, so we're gonna unpause. We're well within our max. We're going to put our steering cue on our dot there. We're gonna check our ASE circle that we centralized, and we are, you can see the T is perfectly centralized. Whoops, a little low. And we're gonna press and hold the trigger. It takes about three seconds before it comes off the rails. Let's fire. Pressing and holding. And we've got it off the rail, we're down to five finishes. I'm going to stabilise myself. You see it's a lofting missile, it'll almost always loft up to get to the target. That's one of the reasons why its range is so high, because it lofts up into the high atmosphere where there's uh, uh, not very much air resistance for it to encounter. Now it's actually going to take a while to get to there, so we'll speed up time and then follow the missile. And that is one toasted yak. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is command a track while scan on multiple targets and fire multiple missiles at the same time, or maybe in sequence, I should say. So what we're going to do is slip back into the uh, pilot's, uh, sorry, the co-pilot's position and make sure we're roughly level. Iceman will take over. We're going to go to track while scan, map auto, and look for targets. Okay, we're going to need to zoom out to 100 miles. So this is by no means a radar video, but what I'm going to do is hook this guy here as our first guy. And you can see that these targets all have numbers on their right. One, two, three, 
and 4. And this is the firing sequence for the track boss scan for the next 4 missiles. So I fire at him, then it'll fire at number 2, then it'll fire at number 3, then it'll fire at number 4. And there are ways to change this about, but for this video, that's all we're going to see. So this time we're going to fire the missile from the Rio cockpit, because why not? We might as well do it. So we're going to launch our first missile at this guy here. Three seconds before it comes off the rail, and there it's come off the rail. And now that is the time until the missile gets there. We've got 33 seconds, and this guy has now changed to number one. So the next missile in the ripple is going for number one. So let's fire again. Next missile. Now this guy's number one. Let's fire again. And you can see, uh, I didn't really have to do anything. All I've got to do is press the trigger, and I could have easily done it from the cockpit trigger. Now, if I pulled the trigger again in the front cockpit, it would now go for number, well, this guy, who was number four, who is now number one in the sequence. So let's go and follow those missiles. Boom. Okay, whoops, get in the front. So that was showing using a track while scan and rippling three rock, uh, missiles off. So in that case, again, they, the missiles would really be guided S-A-R-H until a certain point, then commanded to go pitbull at a certain distance from the target. Okay, so the next mode I'd like to show is the ACM mode. So I'm gonna get close to someone. I'm not going to get a lock on them and we're gonna try and shoot them down, stand by. Okay, I've got a guy just off our nose here. And then we could turn it to bore sight and or we could lift the ACM cover. What I'm going to do now is uh, come up behind the guy a little bit. Okay, it's just ahead of us now. So if you remember, without any kind of lock, the missile is going to search around the ADL, that cross. So I'm going to put him on that cross. I'm going to press and hold the trigger. Off it goes. Uh, one thing I should notice is that in this mode, as long as we have host detectable hostile near the cross there, it doesn't wait three seconds to fire. It only waits, take, waits one second to fire. Let's see if that seek it down. Oh, I missed. Okay. Oh no, it's going for him, it's going for him. Kaboomy! That's it, right. Um, I don't have any jammers to fire against, so I can't show that off. And I don't really see any point of showing the ARH uh, force method, because it's not really going to look any different from what you, what you guys see. So that's everything I can think of showing off. Obviously, a cool thing to do is to go against uh, kind of high altitude large targets and see how far the shot you can get. You can get up to about 100 miles. Uh, some people say, which is interesting. Other than that, that's all I want to show. I hope that helps and see you later.